Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Doodles to Dazzle. I'm Charlie. And I'm Barbara. And today we're going to dive deep into the topic that probably resonates with many of you out there, artists or otherwise, and that is imposter syndrome. So, Barbara, before we begin, do you want to briefly explain what imposter syndrome is? Yeah, sure. So, imposter syndrome is kind of a sneaky feeling that creeps in that tells you that you're not good enough or that you're a fraud, a fake, or an imposter, no matter how talented or talented or successful that you are. Mm-hmm. It's self-doubt thing, and it can affect every one of us no matter what skill level you are yeah and in this episode we're gonna break it down a bit more for you talk about the signs to look out for that can help you figure out okay this is exactly what you're struggling with and how can we overcome this or how can we combat imposter syndrome and actually manage the the you know, creeping self-doubt and feeling of fakeness that can that, that can come in. So, uh, how about we start? Yeah, sure. Let's start at the beginning. Okay. So, imposter syndrome. What are some signs? Um, there's quite a lot of signs to look for, especially uh, signs of self-doubt, as we had mentioned. Even if you might be someone successful, for example. It doesn't matter what level of success you are, but this feeling of persistent self-doubt that can come in is a good sign of imposter syndrome. Another one is when you attribute your accomplishments to luck or external factors rather than your own skill or ability, or you feel like a fraud, or you're afraid that you will be exposed as a fraud, which is also a pretty big one. Comparing your work or achievements to others and feeling like you're inadequate. What other signs are there, Barb's? Uh, for example, setting really high standards for yourself that are just not realistic. Mm-hmm. Overthinking and obsessing about mistakes or imperfections. Or even avoiding to take on new challenges just because of having a fear of failing. Yeah. So, yeah, believing that your success is uh, maybe the result of deceiving others. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or thinking that you don't deserve your achievements, despite the clear evidence that you are competent. Yeah. And imposter, you might feel like imposter syndrome is something, oh, it's not me, uh, or that that doesn't apply to most of people or something like that, or that it's very rare. But the thing is, it's far more common than you realize. Right, Barbara? Yeah, um, there's actually a lot of examples of high achievers Mm -hmm. that have admitted that they have gone through some form of imposter syndrome. Right. So we have set up a a little list here Mm -hmm. um, of... Famous people mm-hmm. that have struggled through this. Struggled through yeah. this. Yeah. Like who? Like Tom Hanks, Lady Gaga, Tina Fey, uh, Maya Angelou, uh, Ariana Huffington, Emma Watson, and even Michelle Obama. Wow. Yeah. And that's just some of the few who've admitted to struggle with it. And I'm sure there are plenty others who have gone through it and ne- not necessarily have spoken or been vocal about it. So don't think that you're walking on this journey by yourself. This is actually a very common struggle for many of us out there. And know that just like them, you can too manage imposter syndrome. You just need to know how. And today we're going to break it down for you. But the first step is recognizing the signs that this is something you're struggling with because that will help you overcome this mindset. Yeah. Okay. So before we go into the tips, though, I think it's important we talk a bit about our own struggles with imposter syndrome. And maybe Barbara can start here. Yeah, for me, imposter syndrome has been there every step of the way. Because 
yeah, uh, in the beginning, I didn't even believe that my art was worthy at all or you know worth pursuing. So even before starting, before I even drew a single piece of art, I I didn't start for many years um, making some kind of excuse because it might not be perfect. Or that you didn't want to show your art to others, even if you did it, for example. That yes. was another Definitely. You know, Definitely. big uh, wall you had to overcome in the beginning. Yeah, and then when I actually made things, I felt like an, a total imposter because I didn't see like my art was good enough. Or worthy. Or yeah. Worthy, yeah. yeah. And I felt like, yeah, um, yeah, I felt like it, I felt like an imposter. It's, it, the name is really self-explanatory. Yeah. Because have you overcome it, or is this something you still struggle? No, it's on and off. It's it's on and off. Uh, it's gotten a lot better, but for me, it it comes and goes a bit in waves. Uh. Um, so I have moments where I feel a lot better about my art. I feel more confident, but sometimes something triggers something, and then it just creeps right back in. And while it's not in the same intensity as it was before. It can it can surprise you sometimes when it does happen, um, and then you have to like take a moment to recognize the signals to to battle through it. Yeah, yeah. and you also recently had a bit of a, a re how do you how would you say it? a reignition or relapse of imposter syndrome? Yeah. yeah, the thing is, this society is very result based. Yes, so. Sometimes things don't go completely as you expected, or you have set certain expectations or goals in mind mm -hmm. that might be unrealistic because <laughs> sometimes you, you just have to put these kind of goals that are out there to motivate you. But then sometimes when you don't reach those goals because they were just unrealistic to begin with, no. you can start to feel, it can trigger, trigger those feelings again and it can come up. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and expectations are a big thing, right? When you mention that, I think often imposter syndrome is tied to your expectations of what you expect your experience to go like versus what it really turns out to be. And I think that disconnect between your expectations is often what triggers uh, imposter syndrome. For example, for me, um, a lot of the... Um, for me, I never considered that I actually struggled with imposter syndrome. But then if I really analyze the many situations where I have blocked my own art or have or never thought much about certain pieces, I, if I reflect on it, there were situations where Barbara might be like, okay, I'm going to digitize this piece of art that I did and then I'm going to put it on a poster i'm gonna put it on some clothing or merchandise and i would just say like but why that's not that great or it's an incomplete piece or there were many mistakes so for me in my mind i would think it was not such a great piece it was worse than that <laughs> of some pieces he said no that was a failure <laughs> yeah exactly for her she would see that these pieces were amazing or she connected with it but as the artist i never saw some of these pieces as being like that special they're like okay they're mediocre at best or something that's the kind of perspective i have because my expectation is that for anything to be qualified as really good it has to have a certain level of mastery or level that invo invokes a certain wow factor or emotion that i'm seeking to to invoke and that's the thing and that is my expectation there and it's so tied to that and i feel that until i deliver that kind of a piece i'm an imposter so that was my struggle with imposter syndrome even though i wasn't conscious of it i i completely denied like barbara she was very vocal and very recognized she recognized that she was struggling with imposter syndrome quite a bit but for me i never thought about it that way and in that sense, yes, for me, it's not been much of a struggle as Barbara has with imposter syndrome, but... I, I think it's just been more of an internal struggle, exactly. if I just can come in there, because mm -hmm. 
uh, I remember for quite a period of time, you went into this deep dive and you didn't want to make uh, Charby related stuff so much because, uh, yeah, to reach a certain level of mastery. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that was like, the excuse. no, I have to get this technical ability to yeah. up to this kind of bar before yeah. I can start creating things for Charby yeah. or whatever. And if I really analyze that, it's like, until I got to that moment, I wouldn't feel like I'm a real exactly. artist. Exactly. And I felt like my, on a subconscious level, I think I felt like an imposter until I reached a certain yeah. level of the, the, mastery. The danger of comparisons. Yeah. Because when you are learning as mm -hmm. an artist, you're refining your skill, you're looking up. Now you're looking up, you're comparing um, to the greats. Yeah, the, you see the masters, yeah. especially in this day and age, yeah. with all the social yeah. media and stuff. You're yeah, so exactly. exposed to thousands of artists and really good, of great artists. Yeah, yeah. And you feel like, oh, until I, I yeah, all of that. I, yeah. Like I don't see that level of skill or expression in my pieces. So I'm not that good of an artist. Yeah, but yeah, or something like the that. roles are reversed, yeah. right? Because it's not because these artists are making these pieces that they might feel that they're inspiring others. Maybe they are struggling too with yeah. imposter syndrome. And that's the thing, right? It can yeah. hit any level of success. You might be a master and you could still uh, struggle with, mm -hmm. with uh, imposter syndrome. I mean, Tom Hanks, for example, you wouldn't think of it. I mean, he's a great actor, but if even he can feel that way, yeah, I think we can all be uh, at risk of this. Yeah. Okay. So what are some of the ways we can manage this? Um, well, first of all, you have to become aware of what is happening mm -hmm. and analyze your thoughts and, and see, okay, is this, why am I feeling it? Yeah. What is happening? Most people, when they get these kind of feelings, they just look the other way and pretend they're not there. Mm -hmm. I don't suggest you to do that. Um, in my opinion uh, or experience, whenever you ignore some some kind of feeling you have, mm -hmm. pretend it doesn't exist, it becomes bigger mm -hmm. and it grows until it bursts. So yeah. my my advice to you is to whenever you have something, some kind of mm -hmm. uncomfortable feeling, is to really take it out there and really look at it and analyze it. Okay, no. what is this feeling? Why am I feeling this? And what, what did I do? What what triggered this? How can I solve? Yes. And go at it as a solution oriented uh, mindset. Yeah. Um, so I I would say that is the first step um, now, into solving your imposter syndrome. Okay. Um, and then point number two could be creating a brack sheet, for yeah. example. That could be a nice place to to um when you're working okay once you gain that awareness like okay i'm struggling with imposter syndrome i feel like a failure i feel like i'm unworthy um even with you you were recently feeling a bit like yeah, this of course so then what did i tell you to look back at your portfolio the mm -hmm. work you've done yeah right? so that is in essence creating a brag sheet yeah right a list of your accomplishments your work big or small yeah. to remind yourself of the successes and whenever self-doubt creeps in so things that you're proud of your mm -hmm. work and i know sometimes if you're you might think oh i'm just a starter i'm a beginner uh i haven't done anything yet and this might be this might be tough right it doesn't have to be a accomplishment it doesn't need to be something physically out there an accomplishment can also be like I dare to put myself out there. I yeah. dare to make a post about my art. I dare to show my art mm. to somebody. I dare to I start. I dare to start making yeah. a piece of art. Yeah. It could be many things. Yeah. Um, and it could even be unrelated. So if you're an artist, it, you don't have to tie your brag sheet only to your art or your artistic expression. It can be something completely unrelated. You dare to do something. Or something you you cooked today, or you went out for a run, or something to just ground you and feel something that you can feel grateful for, something that you can feel proud of yourself, and something that will help you give you 
that self-confidence that will slowly start to diminish the self-doubt that comes in. Yeah. Right? In fact, this is such a crucial step because this sort of ties in to gra- gratitude and recognizing your accomplishments. For Barbara and I, for example, our physical health is so important um, and going to the gym, working out, being active ties in so much to our mental health that, uh, for example, over the last two months, it's been particularly difficult keeping up our physical health, uh, mainly because of being parents or because of being sick on and off and all these kinds of situations coming up. Yeah, life and happening. Life's <laughs> happening, basically. And what happens is our physical health took a dive. And this is one of the reasons Barbara had a bit of a struggle with imposter syndrome creeping in again because her confidence level went down because of the doubt coming in and the self doubt coming in. The the thing is, you you need to you need to have wins in life. Yes, right. And for for us, um, going to the gym is it's a big win yes. for us because doing this as being parents pursuing a business, all that. And then on top of that, physical health is such a a high thing on our list. Not that it has to be for everybody, but but for for us, this is something that's really helpful for us. So whenever we we manage to stick to our goals like that, it feels like a huge win. And then it just makes that those voices of of doubt become a little bit quieter. It's empowering. Because you yeah. feel empowered, you yeah. feel you feel stronger that you you you're like, yeah, I did this today. Mm-hmm. Heck, I did this. You feel proud about yourself, right? And that make that that imposter syndrome gets just a little bit quieter yes. sometimes. But you have to see what wins work for you. That yeah. that's another thing for us. This is something on our list that works. But yeah, yeah. And I think in a way that takes nicely to the next point, number three, which is embracing the losses or the failures um, where you view mistakes as opportunities for learning and growth rather than a sign of inadequacy or shortcomings or something like that. Yeah. And be okay and understanding that not everything you do will be perfect. Yeah. And that's okay, right? Yeah. For me, something that I really like is you have to fail upwards. Yeah. You know, and that because for me, failure, it has also been part of my journey, like mm-hmm. the fear of failure. And it, it's it's a real struggle, guys. It's it's a real struggle. Um, but you have to. Yeah, redefine it and realize that failure is it's not something that's like a doomsday no. happening. It's just part of you growing and, and figuring out, OK, maybe this doesn't work. OK, then take another direction. Fine. No. It's fine. At least you're trying something. Yeah. At least you're doing exactly. something. Exactly. And and for me, I always tell Barbara this. And of course, maybe you have a different view on things. For me, failure is more attributed to giving up. But I don't consider losses as failures necessarily, but rather learning teaching moments where I learn the most from these stumbles where I fall, I get hurt, not just physically, but that's one thing, but metaphorically speaking, even where certain things don't work, certain strategies, certain pieces just don't connect with people, you're running a business, so certain marketing strategies don't pay out or whatever it is. These might be losses, but they're not failure. Failure is when you say, okay, I give up. I'm not going to do this anymore because I just don't have it in me. And for me, I see that as a failure. Now, I'm not judging anyone who's done that. There are times where we need to step away graciously because there is a time to get out of something when you've run its course. But that's a different thing. But that's a different thing altogether, you know. Um, But anyway, I'm getting a bit into a tangent here. But anyway, embrace failure, embrace your losses. These are huge teachable moments for you and will help you manage imposter syndrome. Yeah. So what is point number four, Barbara? Uh, It's another is to... Seek inspiration, but this is a tricky one because you might, when you look for inspiration, the danger is that you start comparing yourself. Try not to do that. Look at other inspiration. Take some, like some artists that inspire you, that you admire, and create. Try to develop your own style, but don't compare your 
uh, style or don't compare yourself to them. Yeah. You might be on different stages of your journey and be you have to be okay with that. You have to be okay that you're all going through your own journeys in this in this life and that you're never going to be at the same stage. You're you're going to find your own stage and find your own voice. If you're an artist, you're going to find your own artistic expression. But be happy and be enthusiastic to learn and take inspiration from other people's work. And just, just don't compare yourself in the sense that, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't have that skill level, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Yeah. And then we have point number five. It's uh, to create maybe a vision board uh, mm -hmm. with images or quotes or items that can represent your goals or artistic or, or life goals or whatever to keep it keep it in your workspace mm -hmm. to motivate you and to help you focus. I mean, we say vision board, but it, it could be anything that can just remind you and ground you to your true purpose, mm -hmm. right? To your mm -hmm. goals, what it is. The point of this journey, what is the meaning behind this? Journey? Can even be some keepsake or an item or something, but it can be anything, just something that helps you feel like, oh, I need to focus on. Or certain kind of rituals. Yeah, rituals too. Yeah. yeah. It can be, it's basically something that will help you ground yourself and bring you back to, to the now, to, to the here and now, to the here and now, to focus, to help you focus on your goal rather than focus on what you don't have mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and that when that we talk about point six which is take a break yeah go for a walk step Sometimes away you need to just go away from the whole whatever you're trying to do just mm -hmm. leave it just go for a walk do something else go work out whatever something different something that is entirely different from what you're doing mm -hmm. because it can it can help you to reset. get better, to reset no. um, with whatever you want to pursue. No. Nope. And resetting is so important on our journeys. I think it can be true for everybody. I don't think anybody is exceptional to this. Everybody needs a reset every now and then. Yeah, your every brain needs to relax sometimes. And if you're just constantly working on this one thing and really, how do you say it, mulling on it? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. If you're yeah. constantly dwelling on something yeah. and you, you keep pondering if you're good enough or worthy enough and this like you have all this doubt coming in, well, you're just, it's it's going to, nothing's going to change unless you say, okay, I'm going to do something different. Refresh my mind. Yeah, as one, and I, I can tell you, while you're doing this other thing, suddenly you'll get ideas. Yeah. Well, once you let go of all those obsessive thoughts, you make room for positive thoughts for yeah. a, it's a solution as long as you're in that state of overwhelm and and crazy thoughts yeah. and and you know the self-doubt and nothing is, there's no room for anything else no. there's no room for a solution there no so you need to find a way to get that out of your brain mm -hmm. so to take a break it, it's actually a, a really helpful one mm -hmm. because yeah you you make room for those positive thoughts to come in mm-hmm and that goes to sub point seven, which is positive affirmations. Um, write and repeat or listen to affirmations. Or maybe, say it. Or say it. That help you. You're, you have this auditory uh, reinforcement happening in your mind that, okay, I'm, I'm a good artist. I have great technique. Or I, I'm good at what I do. Or I'm strong, I'm brave, I'm worthy, all this kind of stuff that can help us. It's like tricking your mind a bit to yeah. focus more on what you are good at instead of focusing on what you're lacking. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sometimes I, uh, I'm, I'm a mom now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for our baby girl is now two years. And for me, I, I try to talk when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I try to talk to myself as I'm talking to her. When she's overwhelmed. So I'm like, I'm okay. I take a moment and I'm like, I'm okay. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But I talk in that same tone, in that same way, as if I would be talking to her. Mm -hmm. And that helps me calm down. Yeah. 
because it's like giving yourself a bit of a hug. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. And and I just want to touch on one thing, which is every point we're mentioning here, we practice it ourselves to some degree or the other to help us help ourselves manage imposter syndrome and our struggle with it. So you, in my case, positive affirmation, sometimes I listen to it on Spotify so that I can reinforce my mind and focus on the good stuff, the stuff that will help me get my head a bit out of this yeah. negative, yeah. this toxic sludge that can come in there sometimes. So we're not talking uh, out of thin air. We practice what we talk about. Yeah. And I think that goes nicely into point A, which is... Yeah, collaborate. Uh, collaborate with other artists. Um, honestly, it's such a great thing to be exposed to other people and other artists because you get new perspectives and it can boost your confidence when you see other people's work, when other people see your work. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get inspired of each other and you can validate each other's work and, and yeah, get fresh and new ideas. Yes. Um, I, I, I can really recommend it to find a bit of a, of a tribe of people that, you know, that you can, you know, rely on mm, yeah. to, uh, to get this kind of fresh ideas. Yes. Yeah. Connection is important. Yeah. I would say more than collaborate. I think that comes a bit after, but it's really all about connection. Yeah. Don't isolate yourself when you're struggling with imposter syndrome. No, put yourself out there. That's that much more reason that you need to get out of your head and go out there, put yourself out in the world, connect with people because you will sl you'll start to realize that, hey, maybe what you're doing is good because it's the same for us. So much of our struggles with imposter syndrome, the moment we put our stuff out there and we see the reactions people have to our, towards our artworks, our products, it's very empowering. We feel it, it makes us feel very proud of the work we do. And also very fulfilling to see that people really connect with our art. So really, guys, connection is important. Put yourself out there. I know it can be a lot of work, but you're on this journey. You either, if you want to see this through it, if you want to walk through this journey and get to a certain point in life, you got to put in the work. You and that's people. important. And you need, you need people. people. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So... In that sense, it also, you can attend workshops, which is point nine, or take courses or classes or basically things to learn. This, again, very important. You reinforce your knowledge base. You reinforce uh, whatever you're trying to learn, whatever your journey on as an artist or as something else. Studying and learning should always be part of the journey and is one of the best ways to overcome and manage imposter syndrome so keep learning yeah yeah another one is keep a journal and this can be writing down your thoughts and feelings but it could also just be that it doesn't necessarily have to be that you actually write it down but just you analyze your feelings mm. right it's just it's like i was saying before mm. most people when they have these kind of negative feelings they just run away from it yes try not to do that try to Look at them because, you know, they're not going to go mm -hmm. if you don't do it. They're just yeah. going to grow. Yeah. If you don't do anything with it, it's going to grow. So you have to process it somehow. Yes. For some people, writing down, it, it can help you to gain perspective. For other people, that can just happen all in your mind too. That's yeah. fine. But do something. With yeah, it. process, basically process your feelings. When we say writing a journal or keeping a journal, for us, we don't do that. Right then, oh. for us, our podcast is our journaling <laughs> process. So, no. you say, so no. I don't want to say that we, because we, like I mentioned earlier, we don't want to touch on points we don't practice ourselves. Um, so journaling is important if you write and do that. But for us, we, our journal is this podcast. It's the conversations Barbara and I have with each other or with many of our friends. Right? Yeah. But it's also, I want to mention it uh, because at some point in my journey, when imposter syndrome was very loud, I did do, I did use yes. the journal. Yes, there and have been times. There have where been times have journal. on yes. our journey that we have used it. So it all yes. depends where you are at in your journey. Uh, 
how, which kind of things that you need. Yeah. At some point, I know that I use. Yeah, no, you and, 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 and I, I did like a bullet journal thing. It it wasn't my thing because perhaps I'm just not the kind of guy to go on every day to to put down my thoughts on paper. I just never had the habit for it. But I did try it on and off over the last few years here and, and there. And those moments I remember that it did help. Yeah, it, it, okay. it did help definitely to process it. And again, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. Yeah. But so journaling can have many ways other than just writing. Even a video journal, audio journal, conversations you have with people can be some level of journaling. The whole point is you're putting out your feeling. Yes. You're putting out something to the world. Yeah. Yeah. You're putting it out to the world instead of internalizing it, ignoring it, making it bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, and then the final point, which is celebrate your successes, Such your wins. Important. I know it goes back to the whole wins thing, the brag sheet we talked about. But um, it, again, this is such a key point to touch on, which is when you complete a milestone, when you complete a project, when you complete a piece, even if it's not the greatest thing in your opinion, you never know who it could connect. So mm-hmm. celebrate whatever it is you can celebrate, even the completion of a piece. Yeah. Even if it's not the greatest in your opinion, is an achievement. Yeah. Yeah. Because so many pieces go unfinished. <laughs> we should know. <laughs> so the journey of an artist is like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You don't know how much, how many knitting, uh, oh, how do you call that? Start. How do you call that? Yarn? Yeah. Yarn balls? Yeah. I, I don't know how to call that. Red string this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you... Is it supposed to be muddy little secret here? <laughs> yes, I have a drawer, a bed drawer full of yarn. <laughs> that she never finished. finished. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I'm glad the barber's like, drawer full of yarn, but I have plenty of unfinished pieces that I've never gotten to. Simply because it just, you don't connect with it. And that's fine. And if that might not be a loss or anything, that's part of the journey and that's okay. So definitely celebrate. It's celebration and success is a matter of perspective. Yes. So it's how you look at it and what you consider. And also maybe you need to rephrase or rethink your wins also because for, especially in this society, we're very result-based, as I was saying. Uh, Um, But sometimes just showing up. Yes can be a win. Yeah. So sometimes you need to rethink, okay, what is the real win here? Because maybe you were feeling afraid to even start and maybe you didn't finish the piece, but maybe you got to starting mm-hmm. something. Maybe you drew something. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't very great. Doesn't matter. But you started to try yeah. your fear. Yeah. That is a win. Yep. So you have to really think about, okay, what are my wins here? Mm-hmm. And really start appreciating yourself yep. for those steps that you're taking. Yes. I think we said, we talked about 11 points here. Um, these 11 points can really help not just artists, but anyone on your personal journey there where you're struggling with imposter syndrome. These are nice, handy little strategies that have helped us manage our imposter syndrome and I'm sure if you really give it a good shot it will help you too and if feel free to try any of these or all of these especially if you're really having tough moments that really creep in every now and then give it a shot let us know if this is something that can that's making a difference in your life yeah so after that Let's talk a bit about the role of social media, right? To imposter syndrome. Let's touch on this. This is very. Yeah. So it can be a bit of a blessing and a curse at the same time, Mm. because we, a blessing is because we are exposed to the whole world Mm -hmm. right now, which is amazing because Mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many different cultures out there also with, and so many different artists that express in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. So there's this 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 whole wide world mm-hmm. filled with amazing artists mm-hmm. uh, wh- who you can get inspired from, or mm-hmm. who you can learn from. 
But at the same time, it can be a curse because you can feel very overwhelmed by this whole bunch of amazing people and you can feel mm -hmm. just sometimes so small yeah. into all of this. So that it can fuel them self-doubt yeah. when you start comparing yourself to others. So what is your advice, Johnny, for artists navigating the social media landscape? Um, first of all, limit your time on social media. But it's a rabbit hole where you can really, if you constantly are on it, it can it can have a negative impact on your self uh, self how do you call it your in your confidence let's put it that way especially when you're constantly looking at other artists accomplish or finish great pieces and things like that um also be mindful of who you follow surround yourself with people who are speaking or who have a voice that is in line with what you want to hear and that will help that will lift you up rather than put you down instead of triggering inadequacy but will encourage you and motivate you to pursue your journey so you have to manage that a bit and that's why we wanted to give this a special sort of moment that social media as much as it's a blessing it's a curse so be mindful of this manage yourself right barbara yeah uh, in fact is it's funny because I remember um, not too long ago we were asked to do a window painting and yeah I went into a deep dive on social media mm -hmm. and I found a few amazing artists who were doing this so beautifully and the first reaction was like oh my god that's amazing I would never dare to contact them yeah because they're so amazing they're so out there yeah and then I thought, what the hell? Like, I'm just going to contact them, whatever. If anything, I have a no. Mm -hmm. This is something my mom taught me, actually. You have a no already. You could get a yes. Mm -hmm. So whenever you feel intimidated, because that's what I was feeling a bit at the time, I felt a bit like, you know, it wasn't as, as extreme as imposter syndrome, but it was a bit intimidation. Mm -hmm. um, and I, But I didn't let that feeling overtake no nope. so in i i was like okay whatever i'm feeling this that's fine it can be there but i'm going to reach these people yeah reach out to these people anyway yeah and it was in fact very helpful and they were very nice uh, it kind of goes back to the tips where we talked about connecting with people and looking for inspiration from other people right so social media is a great tool for that but you just have to like we mentioned before, be a bit mindful in how you go about it yeah. than what you're looking at on social media. Yeah. Indeed. Okay? Yeah. And you might wonder, why should artists bother overcoming imposter syndrome? I mean, it's not a big deal for many of us. Right, Barbara? Well, yeah, uh, imposter syndrome can just hold you back from exploring your artistic side, and it doesn't matter what amount of talent that you have. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's about conquering your fear and embracing growth and maybe it's just daring to start. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that you're an artist. It just can, it can be a wall or it can be something that slows you down. That can give you an excuse to not start. That okay. can give you an excuse to not continue. That can give you an excuse to give up. The danger of the reasonable excuse. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> yes, it might not seem like this massive thing to many of us. I'm like, Barbara, for me, it didn't ever feel like it's a big thing. But now that I do address it, I do find that I've sped up and I've learned and grown far more after addressing imposter syndrome than before I did. Because I didn't realize how much it slowed me down until I started addressing. The thing is that most of the times we, we are just walking with this huge weight yeah. on our feet it's a nice and it, yeah. imposter syndrome is that like you might still be going forward but just a, a lot slower and these weights they're they're made of our own voices and mm. that's the thing so yeah you have to that's why I'm, I'm telling you you have to analyze those things you have to remove it because only you can remove it only you can remove those weights from your own feet yeah 
And that is by analyzing it, by yeah. doing something with it, yeah. by addressing it, because you can overcome it. Yeah. And maybe you can start by, yeah, sharing uh, your art or connecting with us on social media uh, char- at charby.online. You can send us a, a DM or leave a comment on one of our posts or reels, and we'll always try to reach back to you. But we'd love to get to know you. Yeah. And also, please follow and visit our online shop on Etsy. I uh, always forgot in the first few episodes to <laughs> talk about our Etsy shop, but I think it's important we touch on that because. That's what keeps us going here is our Etsy shop. Or even a follow on Instagram or yeah. Facebook or all those things. They they help for us. They yes. just, they help us overcome the imposter syndrome and exactly. when we face it at those. Things. Yes, because <laughs> as you're as as someone who has a business to run, our expectations can be very result oriented and when we don't see results it can be discouraging. I'm not trying to guilt you, you know, emotionally guilt, know. guilt trip all of you, <laughs> but only if you find value in what it is we're talking about. Yeah. We want to provide value. We want to inspire. That's why we do this. And it's very fulfilling when we do. Yeah. So if you do feel inspired, please do let us some support through your follows, shares, subscribes, all this stuff <laughs> across all our channels. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So remember your voice and your creativity matter. Uh, Seek some feedback when you need it. Share your art and just join our vibrant community. Until next time, keep doodling and dazzling. Bye. Hoodles.